Welcome to Draw Studio. Today we're going to learn about the muscles on the hand. Let's get started. There are three main muscle masses on the hand. The thenar group, the hypothenar group, and the first dorsal interosseous. On the palm side of the hand, the large rounded mass on the thumb side is called the thenar eminence. The mass on the pinky side is called the hypothenar eminence meaning opposite of the thenar. The thenar eminence connects to the thumb, making a drumstick shape on the surface. The hypothenar eminence is longer and thinner, appearing more like a teardrop shape. The thenar eminence is made up of two muscles. The first is the flexor pollicis brevis. It originates on the carpal mass just below the thumb. It inserts into the side of the thumb at the first phalange. The second muscle is the abductor pollicis brevis. It originates on the carpal mass more to the outside of the flexor pollicis brevis. It inserts into the side of the thumb at the first phalange next to the flexor pollicis brevis insertion. The hypothenar group is also made up of two muscles. The first is the flexor digiti minimi brevis. It originates on the carpal mass below the last two fingers. It inserts into the side of the first phalange of the pinky. The second muscle is the abductor digiti minimi. It originates on the edge of the carpal mass below the pinky. It inserts right next to the flexor digiti minimi brevis on the side of the pinky. This can look overwhelming especially with such complicated names, but it's actually less difficult than it appears. On either side of the hand, there is an abductor muscle. Just to the inside of each abductor is a flexor muscle. One side is dedicated to the thumb, or pollicis in Latin, and the other side is dedicated to the little, minimi, finger, digiti. On the back of the hand, we have a clear muscle shape on the surface. It is the first dorsal interosseous. It originates on the inside of the index finger and thumb metacarpal bones. It inserts into the base of the first phalange of the index finger on the outer edge. Like all Latin names, it can seem daunting at first, but actually helps us understand the muscle. Dorsal refers to the backside. Interosseous means between bones, and it's between the first set of fingers. So the name tells us that the muscle is making up the gap between the thumb and index finger. The names of the muscles again will give us a clue to how they function. The abductor pollicis brevis anchors to the carpal mass and acts on the side of the thumb. If the thumb has been pulled into the hand and the muscle contracts, it will abduct or pull the thumb away from the body of the hand. The flexor pollicis brevis anchors to the carpal mass and acts on the side of the thumb. If it contracts, it will flex the thumb at the first phalangeal joint, bending the thumb in. The abductor digiti minimi anchors to the carpal mass and acts on the base of the little finger. If the muscle contracts, it will abduct or pull the pinky away from the body of the hand. The flexor digiti minimi brevis anchors to the carpal mass and acts on the base of the little finger. So if it contracts, it will flex the pinky at the first phalangeal joint, bending it down. On the back of the hand, the first dorsal interosseous anchors to the metacarpals and acts on the phalange of the index finger. If it contracts, it will pull the index finger away from the other fingers. The movement of this muscle can be confusing. Because it anchors to the thumb, it seems like it should pull the thumb in. But that action is performed by other deeper muscles. The first dorsal interosseous does not act on the thumb. However, when the thumb has been pulled in, the first dorsal interosseous will compress, bulging out and becoming more prominent seeming like it is in action, even though it is not. Now let's find the hand muscles on the surface. 
the thenar group here and the hypothenar group here make a clear mass on the surface, but the muscles are covered by a fat pad, so the individual muscles are not usually defined. But knowing the origins and insertions allows us to see beneath the surface to find them. And remember that we have the abductors on the outside of each group and the flexors on the inside of each group. On the back of the hand, we will see the first dorsal interosseus. In this pose, the thumb has been pulled in, which has compressed the first dorsal interosseus, creating a clearly defined shape on the surface. In this position, the thumb has been pulled back out, and the first dorsal interosseus is not a thick rounded shape, but has been stretched out to make up the triangular gap between the index finger and the thumb. Remember all of these points when drawing the muscles of the hand. Analyze the anatomy on the surface of your reference, and draw from observation and memory to help you learn. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to go to drosh.com for more information on these topics and many more. If you want to see more videos like this, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.